Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. In this episode of Intermediate Photoshop, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a profile. Now, profiles are a new feature that were recently added to Lightroom version 7.3 and Adobe Camera Raw version 10.3. Although profiles are very similar to presets, there are a couple things you could do with a profile that set them apart. Now to begin with, I have this folder on my computer and inside of that folder I just have a number of raw files. So I'm going to take a raw file and I'm going to open it up into Photoshop. Now because it was a raw file, it opened up directly into Adobe Camera Raw. And you do use Adobe Camera Raw to create the profile. But you may remember in our last episode, I demonstrated how to create a LUT file. One of the things that set profiles apart from presets is that you could utilize a LUT file into a profile. So I'm going to go down a side street here and I'm going to create a LUT file first because I want to use a LUT file inside of my profile just so I could fully demonstrate what you could do. Now, those of you that saw that video know that you use Photoshop to create a LUT file. If you haven't watched that video, I will have a link for that video in the description below this video and I encourage you to watch it because I'm going to go relatively quickly on creating this LUT file. Now, I have to get this image over into Photoshop. To do that, just where it says open image right here, just click there and it will take this image as is, non-processed, into Photoshop. And I'm going to create a super simple LUT file. All I'm going to do is add contrast to the image. So I'm going to get a curves adjustment layer and I'm going to go down to medium contrast. So it's pretty obvious that I added contrast to the image. So I'm going to create a LUT file from this. To do that, I'm going to go up to File, down to Export, then down to Color Lookup Tables. Now I'm going to call this Color Lookup Table Demo. I'm going to leave the quality at 64. If you're going to create a LUT file to use in a profile, make sure you save it as the cube format. That is what the profile uses. So make sure it's cube and then I'm going to click OK. And again, I'm going to call it demo and I'm going to save it in that same folder where the raw files reside. So I'm going to click save. So we will minimize this for a second. And there it is right there. There is our LUT file. And all that LUT file does is add contrast to our image. Now I'm going to get rid of this curves adjustment layer. I'm going to hit, click delete. So we're back to our base non-processed image. Now I did mention you create profiles inside of Adobe Camera Raw. This image was in Adobe Camera Raw, but now I opened it in Photoshop. Well, you could use the Camera Raw filter. That will work just as well and it's really the same thing. So to do that, go up to Filter, then down to Camera Raw. Now this comes in handy if you don't have a RAW file. Maybe you have a JPEG you opened into Photoshop or a PSD file or a TIFF file. Those files don't open up automatically in Adobe Camera Raw. They open up into Photoshop. Just add a Camera Raw filter. Now we're in the Adobe Camera Raw and we're going to create our profile. Now this is where it's very similar to a preset. We're just going to do some adjustments. Now those of you that aren't familiar with Adobe Camera Raw, if you are familiar with Lightroom, all Adobe Camera Raw is, it's the develop module of Lightroom. It's the same exact thing. It has the sl same sliders, same adjustments. It's just laid out different. It's cosmetically different. It uses the same process engine. So I'm going to come in here and just do some super quick processing. We're going to bring highlights down, shadows open up. And uh, we'll uh, bring up the white point, bring down the black point. We're going to add uh, quite a bit of clarity, I think. And a touch of dehaze and some vibrance, quite a bit of a vibrance. Let's bring dehaze down. Okay, so we just did some basic panel adjustments there. We're not going to do anything with tone curve because we have our LUT file. Remember that? So we're going to add contrast with that. Profiles do not utilize any sharpening or noise reduction. So any adjustments I do in the detail panel will not get saved or preserved in the profile. So we'll just skip that altogether. I am going to do some HSL adjustments. I'm going to go to saturation and I'd like to bring the saturation a yellow up 
because I like to add a little depth to grasses when I have a landscape with a lot of grass in it. So I bring the saturation of yellow up. I'm going to bring saturation of blue up a tiny bit too for the sky. Then I'm going to go to the luminance tab and I'm going to bring the luminance value of yellow up too and the luminance value of green down. That just adds a little more like depth to the grasses. And then I'm going to bring the luminance value of blue down. So I'm making the sky a little bit darker blue. And I think that's really all the adjustments I'm going to do. The other, there's split toning here, lens corrections, um, calibration. We're going to skip all that, and we're going to create our profile from this. To create a profile, go to the Presets tab. It's the very last tab over here. Now, to create a preset, you would go to that tab, and you would go down here in the lower right-hand corner, and you'd click on this little tiny icon, and you would bring up this new preset dialog box and you could create a preset from here. If you want to create a profile, hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and click on that same tiny little new preset, uh, preset icon. But this time, the new profile box pops up and we could now create our profile. First, we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Demo. Keep with our creative <laughs> names here. Now the set, do you want it to be inside of user profiles or what do you want to call this set? Well, to show you what it does, I'm just going to call this demo as well. So we're going to call that demo. Now it will pre-check the adjustments you did. I did a basic panel adjustment and I did some HSL adjustments. I didn't do any split toning, post crop vignetting, no, no graduated filter or radial filter. It will save those two filters to the profile if I did any. Um, black and white mix, point curve, and parametric curve. So I didn't do any curves adjustments, so those are not checked. But this gives you an idea of the Adobe Camera Raw adjustments that can be saved to a profile. Below that are this little, is, is this little small section called Advanced Settings. It's really consists of one dropdown. And all this dropdown controls is basically the amount of throw your shadows and highlight slider have. Those are the sliders that are inside the basic panel. Low is normal, so if someone moves the shadow slider, let's say to the right, it will go the normal amount. Move it to left, normal amount. Highlight shadow, uh, highlight slider, same thing. If you want to give them increased range, you could either use medium or high. If your profile is meant to process, uh, high contrast image, an image that has a lot of dynamic range, you may want to use high. Then that means the throw on those two sliders will be at their maximum. So someone could really rein in highlights, let's say, or really open up shadows. So experiment with it. It really only controls those two sliders, but it could be important in some instances. Below that is look table. Now that's not a lookup table. This is something else. A look table will control or will adjust the colors in your image. Use saturation and luminance values of every single color in your image. Unfortunately, a look table isn't very intuitive and there's not an easy way to create a look table like there was an easy way to create a lookup table. Look tables, if you looked at one, it's just a uh, set of rows and columns of numbers and they don't really refer to anything overtly that as you look at the table but what they do is control as I mentioned the uh, color luminance and the saturation luminance and hue of all the different colors in the image I plan on having a video in the future where I demonstrate look tables, explain what they are, and create one and show you how to create one and maybe come up with something to help you create one. I think it's beyond the scope of this video to get into it because it's very, very um, non-intuitive and difficult to do. So we're going to skip that for this, but that is something else that sets a profile apart from a preset is a look table. So look for that 
hopefully in the future a video where I really get into look tables. But we are going to add our color lookup table and we're going to do that by getting that LUT file. So we're going to click on this little box here and my finder window opens up and remember we created this LUT file demo. So I'm going to click on that and click load. So it loaded that in there. Now I suggest you just use the defaults for all the settings. You could use, you know, set the color space. I'm just going to leave it at sRGB. The gamut is either clip or extended. I'm going to leave it at clip. Samples at 32, that's what the profile actually uses. Even if you put a higher number there, it's going to go back to 32 and actually use 32 in the profile. So leave it there. And then min, amount, max, leave those. Those are at their default values will work fine. And we're ready to create our profile. We're just going to click OK. So we created our profile. <laughs> what, what do we do with it? Well, first of all, maybe let's reset this image back to its unprocessed state. So I'm going to right click on this little like lines over here and go to camera raw defaults. So we reset our image back to its raw default. We're going to open up the basic tab and then we're going to go to the profile browser. If you click on these four bricks over here, we have our profile browser. Now you can see down here is demo. That's our profile. We're going to click on it and if I just hover over it, there's our profile. Isn't that cool? I could now apply it by just clicking on it and it applied the profile. Now it is my opinion that profiles don't finish your image usually. You should apply the profile first then process on top of it to really customize everything to your specific image. Now there's some more we could do with this and I recommend you do this. Go to this profile you just created and Hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and right click on it. Now, the, if you right click, that menu pops up anyway, whether or not you have the Alt or Option key pushed in. But keep it held in, and then go down to Rename Profile. And when you do that, this dialog box pops up. Now we could really add some attributes to the profile. Now, you one thing that you may have noticed, see the profiles I sell are all in their own little section. That's called a cluster. So I could actually, if I create a lot of different types of profiles, as I did, I created an alternate reality profiles, the black and white profiles, infrared landscape, I could keep them clustered together so they don't just haphazardly show up over here. So to do that, again, hold that Alt or Option key in, right click on this, keep that key pushed in and click on rename profile and then we're going to give it the cluster a name and we're going to call the cluster something and no one will see this name so it will not show anywhere so just give it a name and that way all your profiles give them the same cluster name and they'll all show up in that same box the set name is the actual like my Morganti alternate reality profiles are one set. Morganti black and white profiles are another set. So that's what set is. Then the short name. If you have a really long name, it might get truncated or cut off because there's not enough room to display it. But if uh, they hover their cursor over the profile, it will show a short name and you could give it a short name. A sort name. Maybe you created uh, three different profiles that are pretty much the same thing, but one is high contrast, one is medium contrast, and one is low contrast. And you want them to be sorted low, medium, high. Well, by default, what it will sort it as is in alphabetical order. So it would be medium, low, high. And you don't want that. So, uh, or high, low, medium, I should say. So what you want to do is you want to give it a sort name. So you could give it um, one, um, let's say you want to go low first. So one, low, two, medium, three, high. That way it will get sorted in the order you want it sorted at. You could give it a description. What does your profile do? Put your copyright info here, your contact info here. Now this next part is important. Because 
this was a raw file, but I actually used, I opened it up into Photoshop. It wasn't a raw file anymore once it opened up into Photoshop. It was a PSD file. And I used the camera raw filter to create the profile. So because of that, it did these more generalized settings here. If you actually opened up a raw file directly in, into Adobe Camera Raw and you created your profile, you're going to be limiting your profile to just raw files. This type right here will say limit to raw files. You may not want that. You may want people to use your profile on JPEGs and PSDs and TIFFs. So come in here at this bottom part and just double check that you want these to work the way you do. You want this to work on images from all models and formats of cameras. You want it to work on, you know, it's up to you, but for me at least, I want this profile to work on raw and non-raw images. I want it to work on color and monochrome images. And I want it to work on normal images and HDR images. Also, below that, there's a little checkbox for the amount slider. Do you want the amount slider to be there or not? I want it to be there. So I'm going to say OK. So now you could see that it moved Demo into its own cluster, which is alphabetically ahead of Morganti. So it's up above it. And it's still there. It does the same thing. And we have our amount slider here. So we could dial in an amount. So that's really awesome. So now, any image that I open up into Adobe Camera Raw, this will be there and I could use it. Beyond that, if you're using Lightroom and you install Lightroom in its default location, this profile will automatically load up into Lightroom. And to show that, I'm going to minimize that and I will open Lightroom. And when you open Lightroom, we'll pick an image if it ever opens. And let's pick like that one something different. So we have this unprocessed image, totally unprocessed. So I'm going to go to the profile browser. It's in the basic panel. Again, it's these bricks and you could see there's demo. It's there. So you can see it's a little dark for this scene, but as I mentioned, it's my opinion that profiles get added on first, then you would come in and you would adjust the image with the profile applied to better suit the scene. So we come over here, go to our profile browser, and click that. That one's a little dark too. So the image I used it on, which was this one, was a little lighter compared to these. And you can see that's that one. So there is our profile browser with our demo image. And again, I'm just going to bring that up. So you can see it's, it's pretty effective little trick. Something you could do, if you tend to process your images in this similar way all the time, profiles might really work for you and help you speed up your workflow. They're fairly easy to create and fairly easy to um, apply. So I hope that helps you uh, create profiles. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.